So we are uh, gonna go, gonna hop in an Uber, go up to Phil's, and then uh, got a show tonight. I think by the time you probably hear this podcast, it's gonna be divided up. Oh my God! How are you doing? Did I tell you that I'm in a in a yacht rock band? No. This is what it's called. It's called Yachtly Crew. We're playing in uh, in Long Beach tonight. And we just have so much fun. It's all so love songs, 70s and 80s love songs. It's just beautiful and awesome. Is there anything you'd like to promote real quick? I'm going to go interview my Uber driver. I got to... No, I don't have anything. Me? Yeah. <laughs> promote... I'm a hairdresser. Ooh, where can people find you? Uh, Hair Zoo Encino. I do men's cuts. I love a specialty in men's cuts. That's pretty much it. I love what I do. Yeah. Um, how are you doing? Good, thank you. You look great. Why, thank you. You look great. Oh, I like your Beatles shirt. Thank you. Um, so let me know when you're available sometime so we can... Uh... I finally went to that NoHo diner. You did? I went like four times what? in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cool place, isn't it? Yeah. I love that place. I just love going there. And it's just like the ambiance there and having up all the photos in the there. No-ho There's just like... Really good. Oh, my God. It just has such great vibes there, doesn't it? Good All right, thank you. You too. Take care. There we go. There we go. I think we got it. I think we got it. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, geez. Wait. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were my Uber. Sorry. Oh, my God. I just nearly got into this, these people's car. Holy shit. Where is that Uber? Oh, is this? This is them. Oh, my God. What a funny... Wow. Hey, how you doing, man? I accidentally... Uh, did you see me try to open up that car over there? I thought that was you. There's a car parked over there, and uh, I went over. I went over to open up the door, and there was a guy in there, and he looked at me so startled, like I was trying to carjack the the car. Yeah. And he looked up at me. He had those eyes, like what? What? Who is that guy? And I'm like, wait, oh wait, maybe you're not the Uber. And um, so I, you know, did one of these, put up my hands, like, oh, you, okay, you're not the Uber. So. Uh, Oh my gosh, that was awesome. That's a total start of like a crazy movie right there, right? Some guy who gets into the wrong car thinking it's his Uber and uh, turns out in this crazy adventure that he never expected. Holy cow, you never you never know what kind of imagination is going to pop out at you from various locations. Holy moly, man. Wow. So how's, uh, how's the day going so far? Pretty good. You're my first ride. Oh, I'm your first ride. Wow, what an honor. What an honor. What, uh, what time did you start working today? Uh, like 11.30. Yeah, 11.30? And that's over here. <laughs> and then how, how long are your shifts usually? Like how long do you uh, uh, drive? I drive from today until 1. Then I get lunch. Probably start again around 3. So you have sort, do you have sort of a method that you go through every day? Like, okay, these are the times I drive, these are the times I take off, or do you mix yeah. it up? Or It's, uh, let's say, I have to start 5.30 in the morning, mm-hmm. and uh, then I finish around 12. Wow. If I don't start at 5.30 in the morning, I don't know, I feel like my day is not the same. I love the morning, too. I always love the morning, and I love trying to wake up... Um, Usually my cats are meowing to get get fed because, you know, the sun is coming through. It's like chickens squawking in the morning. Like, you know, the sun is up. It's time to eat. And uh, so, you know, it's great to, like, start the day off and and, because it feels like the day is extended, you know. Already it feels like time flies. So if you can really extend that morning as long as you can. So you're out there in about 5.30 a.m. until, what, 12? 12, yes. Wow, man. How long have you been doing Uber? Uh, Like two years. And uh, what 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 kind of benefits do you see so far? What kind of cool stuff have you experienced? Well, it's uh, right here. In, 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 like I started in Sacramento because mm. I used to live right there. 
Can I turn this down a little bit just so I can yeah, hear you better? Sure. And uh, well, right here in the lane, it's like everybody like in a rush all the time. Mm. They're not like they're always on their phones. Are people a lot more laid back in Sacramento? Would you say, or yeah. what's what? What do you notice with the differences? The, the people in Sacramento are like more friendly. Oh really? For, like, conversation. Yeah, and uh, uh, people right here. In the, they, they're always on the phone or chatting, <laughs> making calls. Oh, right, right. So what, I mean, what what are some strange experiences you've come across so far? Nothing strange, actually. Just, like, a good conversations, that's all. Good conversations? So you come across a lot of good conversations? Yeah. Have you ever had any costume characters in your car before? Anyone show up, you know, looking like on Halloween, perhaps, or you know, maybe you're maybe you're driving around someone who looks like Superman and someone else who looks like, uh, uh, I don't know, a Twinkie or something. No. No, no you've never never <laughs> driven around costume people. No, 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 not even for Halloween. You know? <laughs> you know, I just thought that'd be kind of a funny kind of uh, thing for you know, because some Uber drivers do different things to to kind of entice people to want to, you know, is, is there a way to actually or, order uh, or like, like a, a way to get you as a specific no. Uber driver? Oh, there isn't. No. Oh, okay. It's random. Uh, but, you know, some of these Uber drivers, they do various, they do various things. And I was thinking how funny that would be. I just had this flash of insight of like an Uber driver who's driving the car and he's dressed like a superhero <laughs> and the car kind of looks like a, like a sports car, you know? Yeah. So it's like your Uber driver is a superhero and he will drive you to where you go. It's like, that's his superpower, driving you to where you need to go. That would actually be pretty cool. Yeah. Superman. Yeah. Ooh, some... Superman. That could be pretty cool. Superman. <laughs> that's great because Uber already means super in yeah. German. So you, you, you stick both of them together like a fractal. Superman. Oh, that, that's great. Sub, Superman. Um, so what are, what are some of your hobbies? What kind of things do you like to do outside of uh, driving Uber? Well, I like to play guitar. Oh, cool. Yeah. If not, I'm, uh, right now I'm trying to, to build a podcast. Or You're building like a podcast? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, dude, you came to the right place because I'm just going to let you know I hope, it, I hope it's all right with you, but I've been recording our conversation because I have my own podcast. You're on my podcast oh, right really? now. <laughs> yeah, cool. so look at this. I have this little tiny microphone. I just I just like to record the conversations with the people that, you know, that I meet all, all day because <laughs> what happens is this is an archive for my future self. All of what happens here, I'm recording it, and it's all, and I put it on the podcast, but it's for my future self, so he can look back on what his younger self did through his years, you know, and the people that he met, and it's it's so much fun, it's so much fun, and it's addictive, I gotta tell you, it's addictive, and there's an app called, okay, do you have a piece of paper or a pen or anything? I'm gonna write down some information for you. No. <laughs> okay, my, okay. I, 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 I my... All right. Let's see. Hold on a second. Let's see if I, I can text this to. I can text this to you, right? Right yeah, now uh, through sure. the uh, app. No, no. You can through use my, through. Uh, my, my normal phone. Wait. Hold on a second. Let's go like this. All right. Anchor. Oh wait. All right. If you're already picking me up, it it already. Oh gosh. So you don't have a pen, huh? No. I should have one. <laughs> All right. Here. How about this? How about this? How about this? Uh, you can, uh, you can use my... here's this what I'll do here just type just type right here type your phone number right into there you don't even have to say it out loud because this is recording right now so just type it into there and what I'll do is I will text you because this app it's called anchor okay. it's free this is what's beautiful about this podcast I can't stop talking about this podcast I absolutely love it so much it's changed my life. It's made me more creative. It's 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 broken down these. You know, it's enabled me to get more to know more about people out there in the world. Oh, good, good, good. So what I'll do is uh, anchor .fm. and that's that's the and so the name of my podcast is Inspirado Projecto. So you you. Uh, 
bam. So there you go, bam. So th what's so crazy is it's a free app. You simply record through your phone. Yeah. Wherever you're at, however you're at. You know, some people use a studio. Some people use a very special microphone. I'm doing the most basic kind of lazy man version I can even think of because I'm I'm more concerned about the process than I am about a specific outcome. You know, yes, I'm concerned about the intention, um, but I'm really documenting. Oh yes, forgot to tell you, that's the street we should turn on. So sorry. This okay. is a weird thing here, but anyway, that's the street. So uh, by by me recording this documentation, people can follow the evolution from when I have an idea and as to when I execute that idea, when I actually bring that idea to fruition. Um, so people get to meet the interesting people that I meet throughout each day. They're going on, on, a, on, a, on a journey with me. We're going together. You know, everybody's going yeah. together. And so, and they can interact with the podcast. They send me emails with their audio, you know, so I'll put either their music on there. So that's, that's what's curious too. If you have any links to your music, send those to me. I'll play them on the podcast. You know, it's it's so much fun because on Anchor, what they do is they distribute it to 13 different places. Uh, uh, iTunes, TuneIn, Overcast, Player FM, Google Play, B Google Podcasts. Uh, uh, oh, gosh, so many things. TuneIn, uh, Spotify. Okay. It, wow. All for free. That's... All for free. And it's like, it's such, and then now they started doing these sponsors. So now you can get, you can put, you can record sponsor th things in there. And... Now you can actually start generating revenue for your podcast. So like every thousand listens, you get, you know, maybe $10 for each thousand listens. Oh, wow. So, oh man, it's so much fun. And, um, it's just a perfect, even if, even if you've never done a podcast before and you don't know where to start, start there. You know, that's exactly where you start. Just simply start talking about knowledge that you have about anything you know. And it's guaranteed to either strike a chord with someone who already knows about that knowledge and, or also entice someone who's never heard of that kind of thing before to now be acquainted with it and oh man it's just so so exciting oh yeah turn right here oh no wait oh, wait what am i doing no sorry go keep going I'm so sorry um oh yeah this is the street oh yeah we came in we came in backwards that's what it was so um oh yeah this way yeah that's right uh thank you so much for this ride so oh yeah so i just texted you name of the show uh, podcast, of course, of course. See, my show also is about synchronicities. It's all about these magical moments like this. Oh yeah, stop right here. Um, it's about these kinds of magical moments, these kind of cosmic moments in time where it's like, dude, of course you're into podcasts. Of course you're into music. It's perfect, perfect. Um, oh, also, if you happen to like going to see live music, I'm in a band called Yachtly Crew. That's where I'm going tonight. We're playing in uh, uh, Long Beach called, at a place okay. called Gas Lamp. Um, but we play all over the place. It's so much fun. We have a lot of fun. And um, we'd love to see you out there sometime. So, um, what's your name? Juan. Juan. Is there any special way that you'd like to promote any of your stuff right now to the at-home listeners? Uh, actually, I'm just starting. I'm trying to build the, 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 the stuff, you know, and uh, buying like, <laughs> things. I, mean, it's, I just got a computer right now. <laughs> That's great. So, so if you... And for the music, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm not from here. I'm from Ecuador. You're from I, where? Ecuador. Oh, okay. So I used to play in a band right there. So what was your band? Uh, my band is uh, like a rock band, but we played music in Spanish. So uh, I've, I've been talking with some of the musicians. So we're trying to record some music from here to send over there. So because uh, the drummer is li right now is living in Washington D.C. Oh. So the the the, the, the lead guitar he's living in Ecuador I'm the the second uh, guitar so I'm living in LA oh he, he, so what we're trying to do is connect everything you know using right. the technology and uh, you know I'm gonna send record my guitar right here I'm gonna send you he's gonna record the, the drums and, Perfect. And, and make trying to make especially now together. with like GarageBand you know that that's yeah. an app that's free and so if anybody who has that app they can share that file with each other and lay things yeah, on there so, and, oh yeah, this is so we, cool we're man trying to build something just just for fun because I think uh, yeah we are too old to try to pursue a music career right no now. man yeah. you're never too old <laughs> trust me trust me you're never too old it's really the time now that you're inspired and you're talking about this right now this is the perfect time to you know let that momentum take you it's, it's so exciting let it kind of carry you along you know it's cool thank you so much yeah you'll come across a lot of interesting discoveries uh, thank you so much for uh, 
Well, thanks so much for the great conversation and, uh, you know, great luck to you and all, all your endeavors. Take care. Take care. Bye. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Okay, so please explain to us, uh, Philip Daniel, a.k.a. Philly Ocean from Yachtly Crew is going to explain to us um, some of his knowledge about the Disney rabbit hole that I've never heard about until now. Oh, I was just mentioning it to you, Kurt, because I thought you would get a really big kick out of everything that, you know, Walt Disney created and where he came from. And, uh, you know, he was kind of a pioneer in his field of animation. And... Um, uh, a couple of my favorite stories about about uh, Walt Disney. He he basically invented the theme park. He invent he was the first person to go like, okay, I'm gonna create a a theme park where people go to, and I'm gonna create this entire world based on my my legacy, my animations, my films, uh, you know, my cartoons. Um, and he did it because so when Walt Disney was growing up, his family was so poor that he had to go to work at a very young age. And he kind of missed out on his childhood in a lot of ways. And so, uh, you know, the more successful he became, um, he kind of wanted to create a place for children to feel safe and happy and to have an imagination and, and you know, to experience the kind of the wonder of life and, and all this stuff. So that's what his whole empire was basically built around. Um, uh, he was obsessed with trains, which is a common interest that I share with him. Um, he built a, a miniature steam engine uh, train around his entire property. And when he built Disneyland, one of the things that he was adamant about having was a Disneyland railroad, which is why they have steam engines that go around Dude, the park. That is so cool. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is that he had fond memories of the train going through a small town uh, in which he grew up. He wow. had incredibly fond memories of the train, and and he had uh, a connection to the train being able to take him to faraway lands and adventures, and and it also kind of became a symbol of like him getting out of the circumstances that he grew up in in his early life. Wow. Yeah. So he he's basically incorporating these elements that have brought him joy throughout his childhood, and bringing those spirits into Disneyland, basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. And I love that idea of like train of thought, you know, imagination, you know, because a train could actually go anywhere. And for a little kid, yeah, that imagination is endless as to where that could possibly be going. And yeah. so cool he wanted to incorporate that. Yep. He was, uh, he created the first feature length animated film, which was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. No one had Incredible. ever done a feature film, uh, uh, a feature length animated film up until that point. And he was also um, really committed to legitimizing the art form of animation because it was actually looked, it was actually kind of looked down on. It was kind of bastardized in the film industry. It was seen as, you know, just stuff for kids. And it wasn't taken seriously. And Walt Disney so believed in animation and the power of animation that he wanted to see it legitimized. So he did everything he could to get an Oscar um, with his films. But one of the reasons why he created Fantasia was that he wanted to create such a brilliant masterpiece um, of animation uh, that incorporated classical music, that um, incorporated all these different visual elements and really make it an artistic piece. Uh, that, that's one of the reasons why he created Fantasia. Wow, as a way to showcase the beauty of animation, huh? Yeah, he saw it as a, a real art form. So, uh, I mean, there's so much more that I don't know about him, but I think that you should explore it. There's a great PBS documentary about his life called, I think it's called American Life, um, and they feature different, um, you know, American icons, and they did a two-part special on, I think it's like a total of four hours of, of television about <laughs> his life and his upbringing and, you know, how he got to be where he, where he was. And do I remember reading something about that he, did he actually do characters before Mickey Mouse? Were there other creations oh, yeah. before that? Mm -hmm. 
yep, he did a, he did a number of animation. He actually used to do, um, he would draw characters for advertisements. He would come up with different advertising um, ideas, and then he wanted to create his own brand um, after that. Well, so that kind of helped him get the roots of yep. having the momentum of moving in that kind of direction of seeing what was possible. Huh? Yeah, and the the initial incarnation of Mickey Mouse was a character called Oswald. Oh wow! Is it that Steamboat guy that we see that they talk about Steamboat something? Well, I think Steamboat Willie was actually the first film that Mickey Mouse appeared in. Oh, gotcha. But Oswald was a character that existed before that. Oh, Oswald existed before that. Wow, why, why do you suppose that Oswald never really made his way into the Disney universe? <coughs> you know, I think it was like anything. You know, he had an idea that evolved over time, and then it kind of came to fruition in Mickey. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay, so that... so. Oswald was the sort of the seeds that yeah. that brought Mickey to life. Yeah. Are any of these video movies that other movies he worked on any of those out there? Oh yeah. Need? Oh yeah. You can find tons of stuff out there. What are some of the names of them that you know about? I don't. I don't no. know them all. I wish I knew more on that in that regard. Was Walt Disney also a musician? Do you know? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. What's that thing about him living above the? Uh, fire station or something something about yeah fire he station. oversaw the construction of disneyland and the first uh building that was completed was the disneyland fire company building um which is right on main street when you walk into disneyland it's the first building on the left hand side um or this actually technically it's the second second building what's the first building i think it's called the town hall hmm. um it's where you know you go for like cu- customer information and and that kind of stuff oh gotcha um but the fire hall was the first building that was completed and it contained a little apartment on the second floor where him where he and, and both of his daughters lived for the Man. entire building of Disneyland dude how fun that um, must have been another interesting tidbit is that he originally wanted to build Disneyland in Burbank California but he could not get the city to kind of give him all the things that he wanted uh, in order to build the theme park there and so he said, okay, well, because Walt Disney Studios are, is in Burbank. And he wanted them to be adjacent. So when they kind of wouldn't give him what he was hoping, he set out to find another space and he went further south. And at the time, you know, highways were kind of all the rage in California. And, um, and so he thought, well, you know, it's a, it's a short 45 minute drive. And he got all this land for incredibly cheap because he bought up all these old citrus orchards. Anaheim used to be known for its citrus trees. And so he bought up all this farmland, this citrus farmland, and um, started creating uh, Disneyland. And the city of Anaheim basically want, they wanted the economy. They wanted the, the money. And so they said, yeah, basically we'll give you whatever you want because you're going to be bringing this huge attraction to our city. And that's how Disneyland came to be built in Anaheim. We built this city on Disneyland. Oh, because it much. sounds to me like Disneyland was the the, right. the big blast, and everything started growing around it, huh? Yep. Yep. Wow. So people wanted to move there because they probably want to live closer to the Disneyland then. You yeah. Know, possibly. Go, oh man, now I can I mean, be closer to it. Also, back in those times, you know, it was kind of the beginning of uh, urbanization and urban sprawl, uh, and people wanted to live outside of, you know. Um, Los Angeles, the, mm. the city center, and so you know developers were pushing further and further out from you know central LA, and L- that's how Orange County kind of came to be. You know, it was it was kind of built as this beautiful um, Los Angeles adjacent community. You know, and you could commute to work and then go home and live in the suburbs, and that's kind of one of the ways in which you know, Orange County was built. Now. How many movies did Walt Disney do before Disneyland was... Oh, I have no idea. I mean, quite a few. I know that Snow White, I think he did Peter Pan. I believe he did Cinderella because a lot of the initial attractions were based on those movies and those movies' successes. Mm. So Disneyland came about, I want to say, in the 60s. I want to say somewhere in the 1960s. I don't remember the uh, the exact date, but yeah, um, somewhere in the in the 60s is when Disneyland was built, and so he had already had big time success. That's he, he okay, kind of good. took his success in the movie industry 
and the brand that he had created, and he parlayed that into a theme park. Oh, that is great, because he had so many visual representations of yeah. what he was going for. Like, and okay, people so I... loved those, you know, and children so loved those those um, those films that it really, you know, it gave him kind of the um, momentum to, you know, build that theme park and have immediate uh, acclaim. The day that Disneyland opened, there were like four hour waits to get on the rides and every celebrity in Hollywood showed up and most of the rides actually broke down. Wow. Yeah. It was it was a huge marketing success, but it was also a huge failure in the sense that nothing was working properly. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Those are great stories, you know, that those yeah. people were sharing, you know? Like, you know, what's, uh, what's cool is like, this is like a really true, uh, example of manifestation of reality and, and most exciting And that's why way. I knew you would love going down the Disney rabbit hole. Like, <laughs> because he was a master at having a vision and being so committed to it until it actually became reality. Like, how cool is that? That he actually created his own land with his characters so you could actually live within the world of these characters. Yep. You could interact with them. I mean, that's brilliant. It's like you're, they're going, bloop, they're popping out from, from beyond the screen. When I went to Disneyland land with my, my mom and my sister, uh, to the California Adventure, it was interesting. I kept saying to him, like, this is so crazy. It feels like we're actually in a Disney movie right now because yeah. someone over there is on a podium and all of a sudden they just break out in song and all of a sudden with these, these people that I didn't see before are suddenly coming out with, you know, instruments oh, and like, boom, 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 boom. You're going, holy cow, this is crazy. There's barbershop quartets out there. There was yep. this awesome vaudeville act that was on the back of a car and then later on they were just roaming through the streets. I mean, oh, yeah. it was just so crazy because, like, you're, you're actually in the middle of this it really is truly its own city so to speak yeah. god it's 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 so amazing and he must have been so excited about that idea of like living up there and seeing his his thoughts and his dreams his imagination actually come to fruition right there in his his uh four-dimensional reality and for others to be able to experience that it's like taking out his mind and going boop there it is and now everybody else gets to kind of go around in it cool now what do you think about the stories about walt disney being on ice Oh, I'm for sure. I, I'm convinced that his head is frozen. I love it. Yeah. That's awesome, too. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that is brilliant. I think that's absolutely the case. Oh, my God. I love it. Oh, I love it. You know, as is so often the case with, with people who are, like, that much of a visionary, they're also incredibly eccentric and, you know, bizarre. And and with somebody who has that much money, I mean, if... <laughs> If you were Walt Disney and you had endless supplies of money, wouldn't you freeze your head when you die? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Because, you know, like, especially looking at the empire that I have grown from my imagination into my current reality experience, what would stop me from believing in the idea that in the possible future, someone will be able to actually figure out how to bring me back to life yeah. by the use of my brain being frozen. Right. And so that is completely visionary in itself. And the fact that even that technology even existed back then, the uh, cryogenics and whatnot, oh my God, that's so kick-ass. Mm -hmm. You know, the, to have so much faith and trust in a company like that, the fact that there's not going to be an earthquake, there's not going to be a, you know, it's not going to crumble into the center of the earth and you're still going to be there, your, mm -hmm. your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, just imagine that being woken up. Like these people who are in a coma for like 20 years and they wake up and it's like no time has passed. And all of a sudden there's everything that's around them that has changed. Uh, just imagine that for Walt Disney, for someone like that to be able to be woken up in the future with that technology and go, wow, now my, my, now my imaginations truly have no bounds because of the technology now. Holy cow. Oh my God. Who knows what kind of cool things he would, he would create. Yeah. Now, if only Salvador Dali would have fro frozen his brain. Hopefully, maybe someone did. Because now we can join those two minds together. Which, by the way, did you see that little... They made it into a short film. It was uh, something that Walt Disney and Salvador Dali were working on in animation. Mm. Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of it. But it's cool because they took it from his paintings and everything. Mm -hmm. And you can see it on YouTube. I didn't see it. That's cool. Yeah, I love the fact that those guys work together. Just these visionaries of imagination, of surreality. Yeah. Who knows what could have happened? I mean, gosh, you know, I would love to imagine that there was like this parallel universe where maybe Walt Disney would have given a, a you know, a corner of the park to Salvador Dali to kind of, can you imagine what kind of crazy theme park rides that it would have been there? Yeah. I think he took some cues from that when he did Alice in Wonderland. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. 
Yeah, because that was just very surreal and very philosophical. I had a philosophy um, teacher in, when I went to Columbia College, uh, uh, College DuPage, and uh, he was talking about how Alice in Wonderland asks all of the, the basic philosophical questions. Who am I? What am I here? Where are we? You know, what am I? What, uh, where are we? Who, Who am I? are you? Yes, yes. Who are you? I just love that these these books are public domain. Like when you look at the Brothers Grimm, because Cinderella came from Brothers Grimm mm-hmm. stories, right? Well, that's one of the reasons why he chose those is because he wouldn't have to pay royalties. He wouldn't have to pay for the copyright to use them. Um, so that's one of the reasons why he did. He took those fairy tales. Incredible. There, there's he, some new- he also took out a lot of the more gruesome elements of those uh, fairy tales. Yes, like in Cinderella from what I remember reading is that the uh, sisters actually were hacking off pieces of their feet to better fit into the into the uh, ruby, sl- uh, into the into the slipper. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, and they're bleeding all over the place and then uh, there's a you point... You the glass slipper. Ruby oh, the slipper glass slipper is the wizard of Yeah, art. yeah. <laughs> try to correct, yeah. And then it, at the end, these pigeons come down and peck out their eyes mm. of the of the stepsisters. Well, they had it coming. Yeah, they had it coming. Sorry, ladies. So yeah, all those grim, the grim stories are very, mm-hmm. you know, grim, very grim, very grim. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't think ways sent is a very efficient way. We got on the. I should probably rest my voice a little bit. Oh yeah, rest it. <clears throat> but yeah, you should check out that documentary for sure. I shall, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. In Sparta Projecto. For the ocean out. We now take you to a Yachtly Crew sound check. That's the question. Uh, hold on, we don't have a connected. It's not, it's, not, it's not connected. We don't have an XLR connected. Yeah. I'm not feeling a connection. Do we have an XLR up here? Like, Moscow Mule Captain of Coke Adios Amigo Babs Blue Ribbon Whiskey Tequila Vodka Gin and Rye why is everyone louder than me? Oh yeah, it's all about the show. It's all about having the fun and the playfulness. And there's a really great documentary on uh, HBO about uh, Elvis called The Searcher. The Searcher? Yeah, it's two parts. They're, so the whole thing in total is about three or four hours long, but uh, it's just about Elvis's life and music and none of the none of the extra, you know, stuff that people get way too hung up on because the movies didn't really mean that much, to, as even especially to him. He hated doing the movies. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be because... Uh, they like to put manure out here, yeah. I guess. Um... So why didn't he like doing the movies? Because he didn't really get any creative uh, control of anything. He was told, you know, you're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna sing these songs. You're, he was told. At first, it was you're gonna be an actor. Then it was 
oh, but you have to do a couple of songs in oh. each of the uh, films. And he didn't like that? No. He was trying to trying to make it as an actor, you know, trying to go from uh, records to TV to movies, but never really oh, was able to... Oh, so, okay, so it wasn't he went, that he didn't like the acting aspect, he didn't like the fact that he was kind of told what to do and what not to do. Is that what you're saying? Sure. Okay. Pretty much two years. So. Okay. If you don't drink, just give me the good ones. Sure you he, he was uh, in a cowboy movie, right? He's got a beard. <laughs> Not that I know. The only time I've ever seen him with a beard. I don't think I've ever seen him with a beard. I forgot what cowboy movie that is, but he's in it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Grace Band will be there tonight at the gas lamp. From outside. Oh, it's a sellout. We're sellouts. Sold out. It's a total sellout. It's a total sellout. If we're playing, it's a sellout. So what's your favorite Elvis song, Mr. David Bowie? Uh, uh, Do you have one? I used to really like. I used to like Teddy Bear. Like, Thank like, you, oh Teddy Bear. Bear. I used to love that song. Oh yeah. Kid, yeah. yeah. I had the forty. I had the forty-five. Yo, Teddy Bear. Mine was always Suspicious Minds. That's a great Suspicious Mind. Did he write that song? No, he did not. He didn't write, he didn't write any. any he he hardly wrote any of it. I don't think he wrote one of his songs. Uh, wow. I mean, it was mostly Lieber and Stoller. Well, Actually, there's a beautiful ballad. But, oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, I mean, all, what is it? I, I mean, I've met Mike Stoller before because uh, yeah, he belongs to the temple that uh, owns the Spawn, so every once in a while you'd run into him. And it was just like, for, I, met, I met his wife, Corky, and she's just one of the craziest, Corky Hale, she's just one of the craziest people I've ever met. Name matches the, name matches, right? Yeah, but I mean, she, she plays Whose wife? Uh, Mike Stoller, of Lieber and Stoller. And he, he was uh, one of the writers, the songwriters for like Hound Dog and you know, any number of... That was a lot of heavy hitters. Were they, uh, were they like a team who wrote for a whole bunch of other people too, or only Elvis? Um, they were a songwriting team. Uh, I'm sure they sold songs to a lot of other people. Carl Perkins, I think they sold it to as well. But uh, uh, you know, mostly well known for Elvis. Did they? Were they also musicians? Uh, yeah, they were some of the few white guys who liked blues at the time. They thought they were the only ones who liked you know, the only white guys who liked blues music. So did they? Did they ever record any of these songs that they wrote themselves? Uh, probably, but mostly is shopping around his demo tapes. I would think. It would be interesting to hear their take on the songs that ended up evolving into the songs for these big you know for like Elvis and whatnot. Yeah. I've always I was always curious about that kind of stuff like Prince you know you always hear about how Prince wrote for all these different yes uh yeah should I get a uh, kind of like margarita I'm sorry I just don't have a full bar just here in white ah okay um <laughs> let me get <laughs> they have margaritas right right no, is no, that what no. you're saying no we do have our readers with our meetup in the wine base. We have beer. Oh, they're not, okay, so they're not really tequila. Not what we were thinking. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Let me get a, a Sprite. Sprite? Uh, geez. Uh, could I, um, uh, I don't even know. A beer. How about a beer? Oh, Corona sounds good, please. Thank you. Um, like, so anyway, like, you always hear about how, like, Prince wrote, wrote these songs for all these people. It would be interesting to hear his version of those songs that he wrote for those people. Yeah. Like, like, uh, what, Dolly Parton? Did he write Dolly Parton? Oh, no, 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 I'm getting Dolly Parton mixed up with uh, Whitney Houston. Um, oh, that's what it was. Shane O'Connor, Nothing Compares to You, right? He did Shane O'Connor's Nothing Compares to You. Nothing compares to you. Um, now you talked with these guys, the writers of Elvis songs, and what was the circumstance behind that? How did you end up working with them? His wife introduced me to him after I uh, helped out with uh, moving her. She, she plays a full size harp. Mm. And um, you know, moving those those things around is kind of a, you know delicate mm. thing. So moving it in and out of the salon was interesting. 
I love doing oh, that. Oh, I got my friends when they see me like that. <laughs> He's gonna be like, yeah. yeah. What the fuck are you guys doing out here? I'm curious to see the album span though. <laughs> I think they're gonna be good. So did you, did you have questions for that guy? Like, did you ask? Did you talk to him about Elvis? Oh, no, no, no. no. I bet you there's a lot of stories that he's never told and he's never been asked. Probably. Is it, are they still writers? I think uh, Lieber is dead. Yeah, so I don't think he's been writing for years. Mm. You never know. Wow. Just imagine how many things there are out there in the world where... You know, the unseen. <laughs> like the teams that are unseen, that like the world doesn't really necessarily know about. You had it? Oh, yeah. Okay. There's always, you know, demo versions of things. So they'll get released until much later. So. Like, I have a George Harrison album that was, you know, it's called Early Takes, and it's just stuff that, you know, from his first couple of solo albums, but it was all demos and stuff. I love it. I love hearing that stuff, the raw version of it, you know? The screw-ups, the, the, the gibberish, the snaps and the crackles. And, well, yeah, like, I have the multi-track for uh, Queen, uh, for Killer Queen, you know, uh, the actual one. You can hear Freddie counting everything off, but you can actually hear what's coming out of his headphones in, uh, being picked up in his microphone the entire time. You just don't hear it in the in the song because everything else is going on. But, oh, my God. But you can actually hear it on his vocal track. It's really funny. Wow. It's too much. I love that. And, uh, so then the time came, I did. And then he called and said, last week's day was 250 pre sale. And I'm like, wait a minute. And Rob's like, you were supposed to give us a free guest list. Do you want this on tape? Please jump in. We'll be back more later. Wowzers. You guys, I am so excited. I'm so excited. There is now an official Inspirato Projecto hotline number. You can actually call the phone number. Yes, I get a lot of people call, uh, sending email to inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. You can still do that, inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. Now, as an extra added bonus um, in ways for you to 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 participate with this show you can call up check it out here's the phone number 561 write this down 561 203 9179 we are we are broadcasting live from Jupiter give us a call give us a call here in Jupiter and we will add your audio onto the show. How fun is that? What a great way to participate. Now, of course, if you're on anchor.fm, if you have that app, <coughs> look for <clears throat> Inspirato Projecto on there. And you can also leave messages through there. I think those are like a limit of maybe a minute. The hotline... I don't know if there's a limit. I think you can add more than a minute. So, go ahead. Send me your riffs. Send me your complete songs. Send me your epiphanies. Your alien abduction stories. Uh, synchronicities. Uh, dreams. Strange stories. Exciting stories. Theories. Um, gosh, there's so many paranormal sightings, whatever, whatever it may be, whatever that, that particular thing is that maybe no one else really, maybe you don't have anyone else in your life that you get a chance to really geek out on this type of stuff with, that you get to really dive deep into and talk about. Well, that's what Inspirato Projecto is for. This is what that is for. And you know what? The cool thing is you can always be an alias, you never have to give your real name if you're worried about people going, wait a second, you know, Johnny, 
Johnny, what's his name, was uh, uh, abducted by a UFO the other night? Wait, what's this? And you don't want to, you know, you're worried that someone's going to be freaked out about that or, or ridicule you or something. Well, call up, call up the hotline. Let's get this rocking and rolling. Call up the hotline, and I will put your audio. I will strategically place it into podcast episodes. All right? All right. Take care. No, that FM station was in North Hollywood. That was the because it was the central in the, in the early is November the 8th. Before, the central. Way, it was FM before, before the central because the FM station right. went to North Hollywood. That's right. That's right. They got that photo. We've all played with all those shit holes back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> but when we get, dude, when we went, I wonder if it's still that tiny little L shaped Oh, yeah, dude. Thank, thank you. Yeah, so it's that same one. Same Right. Dude, we played there the first time we went on like a light because the headline bands are in Hollywood. It's a sunset strip. The headline band goes on like yeah, I know. We got so much fucking hate mail. <laughs> people were like, you guys need to go on earlier. Yeah. Do we always want to, like, the latest we start is when we play at the belly up. We open up for like Super Diamond a lot there Chill. and stuff and like nine. Yeah. That's awesome. That's it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 We gotta drive back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my god, those are great photos. Oh, wow. Dude. He said that it was like, those are good. He went on tour with, uh, on the radio. Oh, yeah. Their TV's oh, yeah. oh, so, so if your team's playing. And George Jones went on first, and then they had Lynn Skill, and then the headliner comes like, I should be on before George Jones, and he goes, George goes to bed. That's great. When we saw the Stray Cats down in Orange County, they, they started, I want to say, it's... She was. Seven, no, they went on at eight. We got there. The, the Pacific, yeah. But the uh, uh, Terry Pop and Daddy's played from seven to eight. The Straight Cats went on at eight. We're done at nine thirty. Wow, fucking amazing. And the same thing with they the Central live. Orchestra. We saw them last year at the Bowl. They started at like seven. You know where the bond is? Yeah. Friday's on top of the game. You know where it's going to be? Yeah. It's on the very corner of that. So there's Judge. He has the Rockabilly Riot. And then the orchestra. And then now Straight Cats are going to tour for their 40th anniversary. Oh, yeah. Is the Rockabilly Riot? No, it's not. Oh, the Christmas show? Yeah, yeah we saw them at the bowl. They're they so fucking right good. Next well, door. For they go. Yeah, they're so, those guys oh, are yeah. so good. Well, all I, have is a black, all I, have I mean, if you're Brian Setzer, after, uh, you can pick anybody you want to play in those, those horns. Just together, I was in song at a fucking, like, three four The first show they played at the Roxy, they, there was only, like, 40 people there to see him. And most of the people were people that he invited personal friends of his. That was it. Like, nobody showed up. This is the worst idea ever. Like, what are you doing? So He's like, no, it's going to work. Just hold yeah. on. Three or four so shots, pickleback shots. Yeah. 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 And, and then and you, uh, guy, met guys that they did the a peach whiskey shot. So he was up to four or five shots. One of our, our horn player, our, the little guy, the little Asian guy we had, his, his teacher has, has been his playing with Setzer for like, off and on for like 15 years. Yeah, they're, they're, those dudes are serious. Only two guys have been there for years. They're like fucking heavy session guys. Come on, come on, like what? There's like a week. I don't know, your epiphany kind of freaks me out. Black Mirror, do you know the show? Your epiphany about living in a world of puppets reminds me of a Pinocchio story that could go awry. Hmm, very interesting. So, Kim Cascone, you, you all have been hearing his Drone Cinema Film Festival promo on, on Inspirato Projecto. He had the festival over the weekend. Here's, here's a little word about, 
about what happened here. So thank you all for supporting it, for showing up and being a part of it. This is, this is what he had to say. Turned out better than we hoped. A small turnout. Venue tech was good. Sound levels were set to stun. Brian showed up and made my day. Thank you so much for making the three-hour journey to highways. We had a cannabis ritual before the evening, which was nice. Randy's set was very lysergic, and the films looked very, very nice on their new huge screen. Sold a couple of items from the merch table, so all and all a good evening. Brian, who he's referring to, is Brian DeVille. Brian DeVille, uh, you guys can listen to our interview with Kim Cascone. He's a collaborator of David Lynch's. Um, we've got an episode on Mixcloud. If you go to mixcloud.com slash projecto, you can scroll down, you can see it. It's our interview in the K. Chung 1630 AM studios. And boy, is it a goodie. And we're walking. Walking. Na, 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 we're talking. talking. Welcome to another edition of Walking. We're walking. But then, we're talking. What? Not the crosswalk. They call it something else. Uh, I do not know. Do they call it the... Uh, like they call the trunk the boot. The foot street? Do they call it the foot street? The footpath. The footpath. Foot <laughs> that's what we're on right now, the footpath. We are on a footpath. Oh, I couldn't walk straight for a second. You still have that feeling? Yeah. You can't walk straight? Oh, yeah. Dizzy? Yeah. Vertigo? Yeah. All of the above. Yeah, we stood that best of us. And the worst of us. And the worst of us. <laughs> Abbas to the best of us. And the worst of us. Abbas to the best of us. And the worst of us. Abbas to the best of us. Hey, and the worst of us. Or are these the kind you get? No, that's exactly what I get. Oh, it is? On the night, sir. Yes, that door is closed. It's not closed. Oh, no, it's open. It's open. Wait, that's the nails. It looks closed. It does look closed. It's very dark. It is, yeah. yeah it's closed. Damn it! Here, you hold on to these. It looks very smoke. dark and yet also Thank you. neon. Well, you just saved my ass. I don't know where else I was going to go. What a perfect team up, dude. Good. What a perfect team up. Right? The dynamic Look duo. how the universe did that. Batman and Robin. Dude, I love it. Smoke by myself. I'll be like, hey, Robin, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing, man? I'm keeping dude, it going. I love it. I love I'm keeping it, it going. Dude, it's yeah. incredible. I love it. <laughs> Because <laughs> we've been calling both Eric and Chris Batman. So, yeah. <laughs> and then, then, then and I start thinking the whole thing up. <laughs> <laughs> like, then I'm like, oh, and then I start thinking of like thing one and thing two. So, and then I'm thinking like, well, Batman one and Batman two. Or like, then I'm thinking of like, uh, what was the other one? Oh, Lucille one and Lucille two for like Arrested Development. So I was just thinking like, you show. know, Batman one and Batman two. But like, which one would claim that title? <laughs> But I just realized that, like, tonight is the Venn diagram of... Because usually it's, like, Eric and Jordan or you and Chris. Mm. So now it's the first time. Yeah. Those guys are <laughs> joining forces. Oh, man, it's so It's going to cool. all come together. Oh, well. yeah, dude. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God, Both dude. Both worlds collide. I feel so comforted when I see you and Chris and I see Christian out there, and it's just like, man, it's just I turn great. around, Jordan and, like, too. the whole drum set is already set up and, and like, wired, ready to go. Oh, shit. I just realized I'm acting like a hooligan who's standing in the middle of the footpath. Do, do they have some, like, see, oh, yeah, absolutely. Which is very, you know, I guess they have coagulations like this in, in uh, Italy. Like, as you drive through the streets, there'll just be a coagulation of people, like, at the, at the, uh, at the intersection. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So they're having some deep, you know, they got some deep insight. When, when did you first get uh, started doing the sound? Doing sound? Yeah. Uh, Bombay, I started booking bands there, and have a sound engineer and so I just took it upon myself to do it because you gotta have a sound engineer if you're having live music. So you became the sound engineer? Basically. I don't know. And I don't know how far I don't know how far I should go with crediting myself. Well did you did you go to school for it or no? No. So you could just kinda learn from just kinda doing it. Yeah. Sometimes that's the best way. Yeah that it's that is the yeah. Figure it out as you go. Wow. 
it's fun because then it, you know it's like Lewis and Clark. Every 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 discovery begins with that initial step, that first step in taking the journey. You know yes. the idea of going out there and uh, you don't you do not uh, discover unless you explore. So it's like you got to start. Exp- and and that's what's so cool is like you're you're just like okay, let's just see how how to do this stuff. And I'm sure a lot of crazy stuff came your way where maybe you didn't have the right chords at some times or you know. All scenarios you can think of. Wow. <laughs> now, in those times, I'm sure you're probably flipped out, right? And yet, here's uh, your future self going, hey, you know what? That's pretty cool because I learned something cool out of it, right? No, or, or I don't no. think I ever got flipped out. Oh, I you did? problem solved. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's so you didn't view it as something that was, like, going to be a, a burden on you or weight you down. You were nah. just like, oh, you know what? This, I yeah, can totally yeah, yeah. get That's cool. Yeah, there's moments where, you know, you can definitely shut down having, like, a bad gig and get just stressed to the point of, like, shutting down, but yeah. you really kind of got to try and curb yourself away from that. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're never going to fix anything when you shut down like that. Yeah, that's you so can't true. You anymore. You just that's can't so think. true. It's like, it's like you're literally drowning, you know? Yeah. When, when, you, when you hit that point in your brain, everything shuts off. You go into panic mode. Someone else has to save me right now because my brain is only panicking. Oh yeah. <laughs> Red light. Yeah, like the ge- the gears are locking up, right? The gears are, like, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's just exactly. the steam is going. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I know what you mean. That's how I feel around mathematics, and like overly complicated things. That's kind of what happens to my brain. How do you how do you sort of aikido your way out of out of those situations? How do you, what do you do? What what know. things you know do you what? tell yourself? The last time that happened to me actually is when Yachtly Crew played the beach party. Oh I boy! Had, I was there surf for rodeo? hours. No, not the surf rodeo. Uh, lobster no. rock? No, Bombay. Oh Bombay! Yeah, it was their beach party. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Night. I just mixed like a handful of bands, and I, we only had like an hour or something like that to yeah. set you guys up. And everything was just, like, off, you know what I mean? And I had to, like, fix all the stuff on the fly. And my friend, like, I kind of started, like, it was difficult because the whole room was full of people. So yeah. I couldn't fucking hear. Oh, you my God. You know what God. I mean? It was very fucking difficult. People, just Whoa, the chatter dude. of people yeah. talking was making it difficult just, like, in sound check. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. So dude, then my friend the Waldo, like, starts, because I kind of, like, started panicking. And he starts, like, getting in my way and, like, grabbing stuff. And I'm sitting here trying to listen and, like... I realized what's going on, you know, and they're like, what's going on right? He's like, Wallo, get out of here, dude. <laughs> Screw me up. And that's when I came back. Oh, my God. <laughs> it took crazy. me a couple songs, and I got you guys dialed, like, eventually. But, yeah, that was, that was a rough one. Dude, that that's, that's incredible. That was, uh, RW was doing that show. Well, I got to tell you guys, this stretch limo just pulled up here. Which, how, how often do you tend to see that kind of stuff happen? Yeah. I'm kind of curious what the circumstance is all about and who's going to oh, pop yeah. out of there. <laughs> I'm so curious, like cocktails. <laughs> like, what a cool thing, man! Stretch limos, like that—that that is such a rarity. Can you even order a stretch limo on Uber? He's it's a days. captain's car, dude. That is a captain's car. <laughs> oh my god, is a whole bunch of people gonna pour out of there? That would be awesome. A whole bunch of captains. captains. Wouldn't that be Pulling awesome, dude? It's like, yeah. Brrr. You open up the door, all these captains' hats are spilling out. Oh, we have a Hawaiian shirt. There's gotta be more people hiding in there. Dude, that's crazy. That's awesome. It's amazing. How often do you see Strix Limo? So, uh. The, the Yachtly Crew show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, at that, uh. So for, at no, that not beach, so yeah, at that beach party, party when, were you doing this stuff like as things were happening? Like, yeah, exactly. while we were playing and you're. you're right. You're, exactly, yeah. Dude. It must have felt like such a huge victory afterwards, yeah. you know, like just to go like, whoa, I yeah, got it through without like. Eventually when I got to a point, like it was great, but it was pretty rough getting there. I imagine like the Han Solo of Millennium Falcon, right? Because the Millennium Falcon's like breaking down. You're trying to yeah. fly through the asteroid field. Having to remember like where everything goes on that small ass little stage, like cables just going Oh everywhere. my God, dude. Oh like, my God, dude. It's tough, dude, on that little stage sometimes. Pull it off. We played there so many times. That was so much fun. Oh, yeah. Bombay, man. That was the place where I first fell off the bar. Oh, my God. 
watch that. Take it's place. right. It's right. It the video. Me the fuck out. Oh my god. Oh yeah. He's just like, where did he go? Where'd Bali go? Where'd he go? And you're looking around. You're looking around. And all of a sudden, you see him rise with his fist Thank in the air, like I'm still alive. Somebody I'm healed. Somebody caught me. Dude. And right then he goes, they got, right I fell on somebody. They oh. caught me. Otherwise, it would have been, would have been yeah. ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you. Dude, that's like something. one of those America's Funniest Home Video sure clips that you would see in, in right a down TV on the show. concrete like that. Yeah. So someone you you oh, s- you landed and they like, stumbled on. Yeah, they caught me. Oh my god! I was able dude. to get up and keep playing. I was so worried about you the whole time too, and I was like, oh no, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> what a daredevil! Yeah, Such a daredevil. daredevil for sure. I oh learned, my, God, I learned my, my, my limits quickly. I love it to get wire work involved in such a way where we have venue with a huge enough ceiling where you could jump from one tabletop to the other tabletop. Yeah, <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome if he's like, for free, free, and he's like flying through the sky like, boom, and he, and, he, and he lands on the table. Dude, that would be so kick-ass, dude. That would be so cool, It'd dude. That would be like, uh, like uh, warnings on the tables that I jump on. Like, oh, yeah. He, like when you go to see like a, a Gallagher show, like you're going to get, uh, you know, yeah, you're going to get watermelon's going to get you. Watermelons, yeah. and like you gotta have a warning. You're going. This is a wet zone. Oh my god, dude! Because then you can jump from that table back to the stage. Yeah. You know, <laughs> from flaney, flaney, and he's just like, Chah. and the, and the audience watching you fly in slow motion as you're playing, and then you land back, and oh my god, dude! <laughs> I could totally see it happening. So many I could totally see it happening. <laughs> oh my god. This is so fun, man. Look at this. These people showing up in these limousines and stuff. Fully dressed up. Someone's in a, in a captain's uh, uh, coat over there. Someone's in a captain's coat over there. Oh, Look at, oh yeah. Nice Look, at this. Look, at this. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at you guys, uh, dude. I'm like, we got these people just yes. showing up in a limo. I'm like, one of those, dude, one of those guys in there is dressed up. One of those guy, guys in there is dressed up in a coat. Oh my god, this is so kick-ass. Dude, so you're, on my, you're on my podcast right now. Oh, right now. awesome! Yeah. Grace and Brooke, he was just in his studio. For those of you who heard the uh, K Chung Radio we got some episode, snap, crackle, and pop going on. There, yeah, there is a lot of snap, crackle, and pop happening. Yeah, nice. dude, this is so good great to see you two dressed up like this. On? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Am I famous yet? Coming to you live via satellite from Jupiter. Oh, Jupiter, you Jupiter. Your podcast. No, oh. no, you just upped the uh, the ante. Actually, the ante has just been raised. Now it's only gold nuggets available. <laughs> On Inspirato so Projecto. Inspirato Projecto, Ecto. Uh, so I have 10% 10, 10, uh, on the battery now. Oh, so um, cool. what, what kind of interesting um, things would you like to promote right now if there's one thing in the world? Disneyland. Oh, that's good, that's good. <laughs> what do you got? Ow! <laughs> we had a question about... <laughs> Oh, sorry, Yachtly Crew. We have a, we have a... I love, I love, that's such a good answer. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. You should say, that's good. at Disneyland. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm working on it. Oh, my God, that would be great. I'm working on it. <laughs> I envision already, uh, I reserve this, uh, a Yachtly Crew ride, actually, <laughs> <laughs> is what I'm imagining. On a ship? Oh, yeah. Pirates oh, and God, yeah. And oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. the right person. <laughs> yes. Hey, we God, can take, yeah. over, take over Tom What's Sawyer's your name? Did I, I meet you before? Yeah. Maybe oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is so great. This is so Thank great. You. You're wearing a universe, and you're wearing all that. That's so I'm great. You got all the stars and the constellations. Yeah. Hey, man. It's what's your name? Ken. Ken. He was at the party, too. Dude, that's so great. That's, yeah. so, great. that's yeah. so great, you guys. Oh, my God. Dude, it's so cool because, uh, you know, just they, they surround themselves with just good vibes, and I think that's yeah. what seems to be There was at, a lot of good shows. vibes in that house. Yeah. 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 That was a good night. Oh, yeah. that was, my God, yeah. it, was it was so funny. the smallest crowd you ever played. <laughs> no, the it best was crowd, the right? The liveliest. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. It was so lively. Like, it was so great, <laughs> like, being up there and seeing him walk in at his face. Like, wait, wait, what, what, what? Because he was taking around in that spiral. You know, he went down there, and he's like, hey, yeah. what? And, then, you know, I, I was yeah. imagining in his brain, like, what he's looking at. He's going down there, like, wow, look at these <laughs> balloons. And then, wait, what's over here? And they're like, oh, you know, oh, my God. That was so cool. It was so great to have V and Chris there, too. I'm watching all the videos every night when I go home. I put it on play. I don't watch it obviously while I'm driving, but I listen to it. I listen to it every day since then for a month. I've been listening to all of you guys playing for us. Oh my god, that is so great! And you have you have videos of this stuff? Yes, all the different videos. You know what would be so fun is to see a a full video of all the different camera angles. You know, like edited together of that night. Because if you've got all those different, oh my god, that would be so crazy to see all the different angles. Well, you 
know, oh, you know yeah. editors, so we just like. We Wouldn't it be awesome to done. see like a short footage film footage of sorts of? Every day yes. she watched the footage. Oh my day. god, that's awesome! <laughs> every day she watched. Well, you were like, you were like, you were like a master, <laughs> like, uh, like a like a Batman villain, right? Where it was very mastermind planned. There were yeah. so many little elements to I it. I'm a very good liar. So you must have felt so surprised, it's like the Riddler, leaving yeah, all the little it's not clues. A great thing to find out. <laughs> It's just so great. <laughs> well, it's so great. Find to out that my wife is the best liar. Oh my god! <laughs> it's what not the best thing games? to find out. <laughs> okay, I still have some video footage I've not given you. Yet. I know. So there's I'm like waiting some, for yours. There's some hidden tapes out there. Oh good. Oh yeah, good. You guys, everything. when you were about to, everybody filmed him when he walked in. He filmed you guys when. You oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. We can pretend that that's like the Japanese import uh, uh, videos, <laughs> yeah. right? Remember, like growing up, they'd be like, "Oh, it's a Japanese import of right. Pearl Jam." You're like an extra song. I've never heard of before. How's that possible? <laughs> and why is it only available in Japan? And why is it so expensive? You know. But it's like that could be like the Japanese import, you know, thing. It's like this video has never been seen before. Well, what's this funny is thing. when everyone yelled surprise, you guys seem surprised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, That's awesome. Oh, you, uh, you guys didn't know. Oh my God! You got one of those screens, like up on a screen where it splits it, where you see his interaction and our interaction at the same time. That'd be pretty cool. Like some twenty-four kind of stuff where you have all this. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! All right. Shall we go? We're gonna go in. Oh, that's right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I was thinking, and I might have said this before, what if every piece of news that we hear about, everything, every talk, every meeting, every sort of press conference thing, they say it's going live, but what if it's not? What if it's something that was already shot, something that already happened, and now it's being doled out to us? Maybe it happened 10 years ago. I mean, if the military can be 30 years ahead of us, technology-wise, probably 300 years ahead of us, the rest of everybody else, technology-wise, who's to say that those controlling the media are not already far ahead of what's going on? as well.